So no applause this time. Just just jump right into it. So here's my story. I get done. I'm on the verge of finishing up my master's degree. And the the if if you are finishing up your master's degree, first of all, if you're finishing up your master's degree, if you're pursuing it, you're probably engaging in dialogue with people who have their doctorate degree. At some point you're gonna run into these people. Okay, if you are if you have your masters or if you are pursuing your masters, you're going to eventually start running into people who have their doctor's degree, right? It's just how it happens, okay? And so they'll start encouraging you, hey, you need to get that next, you need to get that next, that next piece of paper. You know, you need to take it up a level, you all right? And so you will hear that and you'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. And you may be for real or you may just say it because it sounds cool. You know, you're already ambitious because you are, you're pursuing your master's. So the idea of pursuing a doctor's degree, that's just more work, but in a, in a tighter vacuum. So it doesn't seem daunting, especially when you're already doing the work. You know what I'm saying? Like if you were already building the house and someone said, hey, man, you know what you got to do next? You got to build a mansion. You probably wouldn't be that overwhelmed because you're like, oh, I'm already building the house. You know, I already got the foundation laid and all this other stuff and I'm building the walls or whatever. So what's a, what's a mansion? So that's kind of how you. So when you when you when, when you start thinking about getting the next level, it doesn't seem as daunting when you're already doing a, a lot of work on, on, on a lower level. So. Of course, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's my next thing, you know. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my doctor's degree. And then someone says you should probably take a break, right? If you've been going to school for two years, three years, whatever the case may be, if you really, if you went, if you got your master's degree, or you know, you should probably take a year off, all right? Work a little bit, um, reap the reap the benefits of having completed uh, your degree. Um, just give your brain a chance to chill. Give your family a chance to chill because when you pursuing academic pursuits sometimes the family can kind of go through it and for me to be a husband and a, and a father of three and then getting my master's i was doing a bunch of work i was staying up really really late i mean i i, I had to ignore the family sometimes my wife made a lot of sacrifices to make sure that i could do my work uh, and, and not be bothered by the kids and you know she just gave me my my, my space right and so with that being said, you recognize how much your family supports you and how much they try to take care of you so that you can fulfill your obligation and, and meet your goal. So it may not be the smartest thing to jump into another intense academic uh, process. So I take a year and I just chill. So now what happens is that I was when I was working to, to now do some more work didn't seem like much because I was already in condition. It's almost like when you... When you're when you're in condition and you're working out and someone says, hey, let's do one more thing. You already in condition. You already tired. You, you know, you already in like training mode. So to do something else is not a big deal. But once you take a while off and then somebody says, let's let's do that big thing that we were going to do. Now, all of a sudden, because of the lack of conditioning, because your, your body's been at rest, your body isn't kind of up to you know, cold in terms of being under condition, being strong and all that other stuff. Now, all of a sudden, that 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 next level idea, that next level task becomes daunting. OK, so it's kind of like if I so we, if we had a tour day and I said, hey, man, after our tour day, let's go back to the gym and do something. Well, when you when you always working out, what's what's a, what's a three a day? What's one more workout? Right. But now, if, if, if you haven't been working out and I say, let's just work out, right? Or let's just do a two a day. All of a sudden, you're like, dude, I, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not in shape like that. Or if you haven't built a house and I say, hey, let's build this mansion, right? You, you built your first house and you, you went about a year. And now I'm coming back to you saying, listen, let's build the mansion. All of a sudden, you're like, whoa, whoa, man. Hold on, man. I uh, I haven't I haven't I haven't done that kind of work in a in an entire year, so now that next level task that seems doable and seems less threatening, all of a sudden becomes threatening, becomes daunting. So when I start thinking about my PhD, after a year having got my master's, all of a sudden I'm not as gun ho about 
pursuing it. So my wife and I started to have these conversations about me pursuing my PhD. She says, you know what? Some schools pay for uh, their, you know, for people to get their PhD. So this could be like a, you could, you could get paid for this. You can not only get your degree, but you can get paid for it. That might be a really cool thing, Marv. You should look into it. So while we talking about this at the crib, I'm thinking to myself, sure. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Because I'm at the crib. I'm at home. I don't have, I, like, it's not really in my face. It's not right, right there in front of me. So it's a good idea because in essence, the the cost, like the, the 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 job or the opportunity, the the, the 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 PhD thing is kind of somewhat far away. I gotta go to the school. I gotta I got I gotta learn information. I gotta talk to people. I gotta go to the admissions process. Like it's so far away that it's easy to say, yeah, let's look into it. <laughs> but this is this is how it's funny how the world works, how the universe works. Lucy soccer coach just so happens to have her PhD. She got it from Michigan. Not sure where she got it in, but she does her work at uh, University of Toledo. So Sarah says, you know, Lucy's coach has her PhD. I think she got it from Michigan. You should go talk. To, we should go talk to her. Lucy has a play date with her daughter on Thursday. When we go pick her up, you should come with me and talk to her. Now, again, it's probably like a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So I'm like, yeah, no problem. Let's do it. Because in my head, in my head, I'm thinking... It's far away. It's a two days away. You know, like by the time we get to that, by the time we get to Thursday, you know, you, Sarah, she'll probably forget. I'll come up with an excuse. Well, I'm, I won't have to do it. Right. So, so yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her. Once Thursday happens, I'm trying to chill. Sarah says, Hey, get in the car. We're about to go get Lucy. I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so we hop in the car and Sarah's driving. She gets out of the car and I'm saying okay I have to stay in the car she said no 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 you're gonna come in right you're gonna talk to you're gonna talk to so and so about the PhD thing I said oh yeah 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 that's right yeah yeah that's right so now it's getting real it's getting real for me I'm getting intimidated about getting advice I'm getting intimidated about getting advice right but I get out the car I go inside I talk to the sweet sweet lady uh, we we get into a very organic conversation about the PhD, so it wasn't awkward or anything like that. As I'm talking to her, I, I I fall back into the zone of talking about academics and and theory and all that other stuff, right? I kind of go back to that moment where all I did was study and read and write papers, and my brain started clicking, and I was. I started sounding like I, I used to sound when I was pursuing my master's degree, right? And I got kind of excited because I miss how pursuing my master's used to make me feel. I used to feel so smart. I felt like my conversation was elevated. I felt like the words that I used were million dollar words, multi syllable words, right? I love that feeling. And so all of a sudden, Get my mass, get my PhD sounding cool again, because I love that feeling that I got when I was d- deep into academic rigor. So I hop in the car, and the lady had given me a couple names. She says, "I'm going to give you a couple names, but I'm going to send some emails on your behalf, and then um, you email these people, and hopefully it all works out." So about three days goes by, and then she finally sends me the emails of the people. And then she says, these are the guys that you need to talk to, reach out to them. I, I sent something on your behalf. So I'm thinking, I'll, I'll, I'll email these people. I'll email these PhD kind of advisors, right? They're probably so busy, they probably won't get back to me for who knows how long. So I'll email them. So again, it's that thing where when you when you feel like the the, the opportunity for something to really happen is low, it's easy for you to kind of get involved. Like, I used to talk to girls when I was younger. I used to I used to talk to girls when I was younger and flirt with the girls who I knew had I had no chance to get. So like it, it, I was playing with house money. Like I'm gonna flirt with you, and I know you don't like me, so I don't have to really worry about rejection because I'm already I'm already in essence I'm rejecting myself. So it's easy to talk to you, but it's that one girl that you that is that one girl that I, that I thought I could get. I would never say anything to her. 
I would never say anything to her because I was scared to death she would reject me. Because I felt like that was my level. Stupid stuff, right? But sometimes that's how we operate. When, when we know we can't get it, either we won't be bothered or we'll, we'll, we'll do it anyway. Because what's the point? Like, I know I'm not going to get it anyway. So, like, I, I'm, I, throw my, I throw my name in there. Who cares? But it's those, it's those opportunities or it's those moments that are, are gettable, that are tangible, that are achievable. And sometimes we, we hide from those. So in this situation, I felt like, what's the point? Like, these, these people aren't going to get to me, and it'll give me an excuse to kind of delay the, the, the process of me getting information for my PhD. It'll, it'll delay that, and, I, and I, I'll have an excuse. And I'll just say, man, these people, don't, these people are so busy, they won't get back to me, and I, 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 I send them an email, I'm waiting for them. It'll give me an excuse. So I send these emails off, <laughs> and within like a day, I get a response back. Now, I only got like two or three emails, but I've gotten a response back from all these people that are supposed to advise me about getting my PhD. One guy responded ASAP. And then on top of that, he had availability, like he had immediate availability. So if I, if I emailed him on a Monday, I was talking to him on a, on a Wednesday. It was lickety split. So... I, I'm a little nervous, but I'm, I'm moving on. I'm, I'm moving on. I'm, I'm, I'm being courageous in the face of insecurity, being afraid, being intimidated. I'm continuing to march on. Okay. So that Wednesday, (laughs) he says his office is is above a Starbucks. I go to the wrong Starbucks, right? So I'm all, I'm already I'm already I'm 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 about to be running late. I realize that this place is right on the street from where I work, literally. Okay? So I go from one Starbucks to back to where I work and then I jog to the correct Starbucks. I go upstairs and um, I meet this gentleman. I'm about 10 minutes late. He told me to meet him a little before 5. I've never heard anybody say meet me a little bit before 5. Either it's like a quarter to 5, 4:30, after five, whatever. But he says, meet me a little before five. I thought that was kind of vague, but whatever. So I get there on two, five, 10. I come in there, older white gentleman, very chill, very cool, very relaxed. He says, Marv, good to meet you. Shakes my hand, says, have a seat. I got a, I got a coat on and I got a vest on, right? And I just got done running. So I'm a little heated and I am, uh, Breathing, breathing heavy, but I'm trying to control my breathing. I'm, I, I, I've always worked to breathe under control, even in the practice of at, intense athletic activity, because I think it has some benefits to clarity and all this other stuff. So anyway, I'm pretty good at controlling my breath when I'm t- when I'm like when I'm when I just got when I've just finished engaging in intense activity. So I'm doing a good job of kind of calming myself down, maintaining my composure. So he starts asking me some questions, not hard questions, not hard questions. And I stop him and say, I just got done running here. I'm a little winded. I'm trying to relax. He says, Marv, you talk to me when you are, when you're ready to, you're good. So he's doing everything he can to kind of cool me out. Right. And so I'm doing my best to cool myself out. But every now and then, I get hit with a moment that I think is bigger than me or beyond me. So it's that one moment where you can talk to all these other girls right here. But then when you meet that one girl, you almost forget how cool you are, right? And all of a sudden, I've lost my cool. I've lost my cool. Like all the stuff that I, confidence, uh, genius level, talent, passion, purpose, all that, all this stuff that I lean on to keep me cool. I've lost it. This moment has become bigger than me. I'm about to learn about the PhD program. Somebody's about to talk to me. Somebody's about to give me their time. I'm about to learn about this stuff. It's, it's, a, it's, it's about to get real. I went from just talking about it and just having fun with it to I'm sitting in a chair and somebody's about to give me some advice. Okay, so it's getting real for me. 
So the guy's asking me questions and I'm stuttering, stumbling and, 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 and mumbling because I can't figure it out. I can't get my cool back. Nervous, anxious. Finally, I, 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 I normalize myself to some degree. I find my balance, but it's not I'm not totally balanced. I'm more awkward than I am graceful and I keep but I'm keep working through it. We have a beautiful conversation. He gives me a bunch of details. Long story short, at the end of our conversation, he says, I have three people I want you to talk to. I'm going to see I'm going to send emails on your behalf. He writes the emails right in front of me. And then he asks he, he asks me to read them and says, is this OK? I said, sure. He sends off the emails to his friends. He then asks some more questions. Tells me, excuse me, he tells me a little bit more about the process. The, the PhD admissions process. And then he um, he lets me know that the process is going to be tough. It's going to be rigorous. But, um, you know, it's doable. He asked me what my process, what, what my concept is, what I want to study, what I want to go into. And I give him some some details and he kind of through my details. He gives me a process or an approach and he helps me with the he he, he gives me a a, 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 a a very vague or a skeleton in terms of a pathway. Based upon what you're interested in, based upon what you want to study, based upon the research that you said you want to do, based upon what you bring to the table. This is where I think you may want to go. This is maybe what you may want to pursue. These are the schools that you may want to jump into. Shakes my hand. I leave. He says, and give me a call back once you've talked to these people. That happened. I think that happened Wednesday. You know what? It happened Tuesday. It happened Tuesday. By yesterday, all the people that he emailed had emailed me back. So he sends to me their response to him. So he emailed them. They responded to him saying, yeah, I'll be, I would love to meet this young man. Put me, put me in contact with him. And then he sends back another, like another thread that says, Mar, they're, 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 they're waiting for you. So let's go back. My daughter's soccer coach gave me two or three names they all contacted me i meet up with this gentleman name i meet up with this gentleman that you're very this phd um he's not a professor he's more so an advisor but i meet up with him he gives me three names they all contact me i got six people on deck to talk to me about phd programming or phd degrees PhD, doctoral, whatever. I, I got six people on deck to talk to me about this stuff, to advise me. I'm going to talk to each and every one of them. They may all tell me. Who knows what they're going to tell me? But I know I'm going to talk to all of them. Here's my point. Sometimes, man, we get so scared and intimidated that we won't even... Complete the process of getting information. All I'm doing is getting information. I want to know as much as I can. I want I want to know as much as there is to know about what it is that's in front of me, or, or what it is that I have to do to get what I want. I'm not doing it. I've not done it yet. I'm not even. I'm not even wrote a a word in the direction of my uh, PhD degree. I'm simply getting information. And I was scared to death. Scared to death. I think about some of the moments in which I've been brave, courageous, strong, confident. And it's funny how there's still those moments out there that can just intimidate you. And make you forget who you are. And here I am, knowing what I know, having these conversations with myself to keep myself together. I got intimidated, so intimidated that I didn't even want, I didn't even want to pursue the process of getting information. Not pursue the process of getting the degree. I didn't want to 
pursue the process of getting information about getting the degree. How many people show up that way? How many people fall into that category? Or how many people fall into that 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 hole of I don't even want to start the process. I don't I don't even want to learn information about how to start the process. I don't even want to learn I don't even want to learn how to even jump start this thing. It's like somebody saying <laughs> In order to learn to drive, you have to get in the car. Just get in the car. You can get in the front seat, the back seat. You can get the passenger seat. Drive whatever. Just get in the car. And that's and that's and that's in 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 what I was going through is symbolic to nah. I don't even want to get in the car. Don't open that car door. I'm not getting in it. Like, that's how afraid I was of the process. But then I got in the car and I was nervous. But I was like, okay, this is not that bad. This isn't as intimidating as I thought. These seats are a lot more comfortable than I thought. Wait a minute. So you you telling me that all I got to do is just take this key, put in the ignition, and it starts up. If I just get in the car and put the... Key in the ignition, it starts up. Oh, wow. So when I was looking at everybody else driving, it looked really intimidating and daunting. But you're telling me that if I can just get in the car, I can put the key in the ignition, it starts up, and all of a sudden, the car is running. This doesn't seem as daunting as it did before. Now, I still got to learn how to drive. Right. I got to still learn how to drive in a world where everybody's on their cell phone and not paying attention. I got to be a defensive driver. I still got to learn how to drive and, 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 and understand where I'm going and all this stuff, abide by all these different rules and understand roundabouts and understand, uh, you know, stop lights, stop signs, yellow lights, yellow blinking lights, red blinking lights. I still got to learn all these rules about driving. I still have to, and I still have to be mindful of people, people around me. I got I still have to be on, uh, be mindful of speed laws and, and what neighborhood goes from 35 to 40 to now you can drive 60 to 65. And I still got to, I still got to, you know, learn all this stuff about driving, which is very difficult. It's very daunting. It's overwhelming. There's so many things you got to be aware of, right? I still got to drive under conditions, right? When it's what, what? How do you drive when it's raining? How do you how do you drive when it's snowing? How do you drive when it's pouring down? How do you drive when uh, it's a, it's a thunderstorm or it's a snowstorm or it's, or it's, it's a hailstorm? How do you drive? How do you figure out where you're going? How do you defi- drive defensively? How do you how do you drive in different areas with different speed limits, with different road conditions, under different weather conditions? How do you how do you how do you learn all this information, all these different variables at different times at night? You know, there's there's in the morning, in the afternoon, and in, and in the evening, there's going to be rush hour traffic, all depending on where you're going. And then sometimes at nighttime is going to be different. Oh, there's a there's a there's a there's a game. So now there's a game or a college game and now people are driving recklessly because they alcohol is in the system is all these different variables i gotta learn but you're telling me that if i just get in the car and i just start the ignition i start the learning process eventually i'll learn how to navigate myself through all these different circumstances and variables as a driver okay let me just get in the car so Try not to, I hate to say try, work on not being afraid of studying the process. The process is tough. The process is, the actual process is tough. Going going to driver's ed, you know, X amount of weeks, you know, going student driving, you know, that first time that you go from the parking lot, that's where no one is, to, to you, your neighborhood driving. You know, and then you go from neighborhood driving to main street driving. And you go from main street driving to the freeway. 
main, main, you know, freeway to the highway. And then you have your first, and then you do all your, you know, you drive with your parents and your parents are on your case and they're looking at you sideways and they, you know, hyperventilating every time you, you, you stop quick or you, you, you seem like you're not going to stop. And so you, you go through that process and, and, and then you just keep thugging it out. You just keep getting after it. And then you have that, that one moment where your, your parents tell you, okay, go over here and get this. It's a short drive, but it's by yourself. And then you had that moment where you, you get your friend and now y'all, you're trying to be cool with your friend. You're trying to listen to the music. You're trying to have fun like you would normally have fun if you're in a passenger seat, but you're still trying to keep everybody safe in the car, right? You, you, ha- you work through that moment. Then, you, then, you, then that moment where you, you get somebody that you're trying to impress. Somebody, it could be a girl, it could be your, your, your grandparents, but you're trying to drive and you're trying to impress them. And, and so you, you, that's the process. Like that's, that's all, that's the process, that's intimidating, right? But we're not talking about that. We're just talking about you getting in the car, getting the information. And so the process is one thing. That's going to be intimidating. But don't allow getting information about the process to be so intimidating that you, that you won't start anything. And that's what I went through. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself. I went to wondering, you know, what would be my next step to now I got six people on deck to tell me what my next steps are going to be. And they're all and they all have their PhDs. Y'all know my rule. I only get advice from people who have been where I want to who have been where I want to go or are doing what I want to do. So I got six people who are certified, six people who have credentials. Let's talk. Let's talk. And I'm not afraid for them to bang me over the head and tell me that it's going to be incredibly difficult and daunting. I'm not afraid of that. At this point, I've already got six people to talk to. I feel like I've done the hard part. (laughs) I've done the hard part. I started the process. So now whatever they tell me is whatever they tell me. But I know they're going to also give me some hope. They're going to tell me, Mar, but it's possible. If you do X, Y, and Z, it's possible. If you get a letter of recommendation from this person, it's possible. If you if you if you can create this narrative and, and put it on some sort of resume, and then it's possible. If you tell them about some of your other work that you've done in terms of your inspirational speaking and this and this curriculum that you've developed, if you put that on there, it's possible. If you if you write a if you write a beautiful cover letter um, that that tells these people about you and what you want to do and how you can impact the world, it, hey, you might get the benefit of doubt. It's possible. You, 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 you might have to go meet with a few more people. You might have to talk with a few more people. You might have to get a few more people behind you. But, Mar, it's possible. So it doesn't matter how tough the process is. All I need to know how tough it's going to be, what are the prerequisites, and all I know is I have enough skill and ability where I can figure out what the, what the, what the, what the prerequisites are, fulfill them, and put myself in position to at least be admitted into a program or at least be, yeah, to be admitted to a program. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. I just gotta, just gotta figure out the, I just gotta figure out the recipe. I just gotta figure out the, the, the code. I just gotta crack the code and I'm good. So that's my story. I hope it makes sense. If you're out there and, and, and there's something that you want to do, but you're afraid of the process, work through that. I'm not telling you don't be. I'm not telling you not to be afraid of the process. Because I can't tell you not to be afraid of something. But I can't tell you to work through it. Just work through it. And, and allow yourself to be banged on the head with whatever information that you get. And information may be, hey, this is a tough process. Hey, this is very rigorous. Hey, they only admit a few people in. That's cool. That's cool. How, what do I need to get in? What do I need to jumpstart this process? And then take it from there. Take it from there. And jumpstarting the process may take you a year. Jumpstarting the process may take you two years. Jumpstarting the process may take you two days, two weeks, two months, two seasons. May take you two minutes. May take you two hours. But if you love it enough and you want it enough, and if you can see yourself having achieved what you want and you can feel it not see it but you can feel it 
if you can feel it, then you started the process. You started the process and you are now attacking this process spiritually. Not mentally and physically, you're attacking the process spiritually. Once you can feel it, you're now attacking this process spiritually. And when you attack things spiritually, you put yourself in great position to be successful. So that's it. I'm done. Um, Man, got a great response from um, having Blake on the podcast. Uh, my, my, one of my other good friends, Johnny Late Night, uh, he wants to come on. And uh, still working on getting Andrew Patrick to come on. These are people that you don't know, but these are people that when you hear him talk and you hear us talk together, you're going you're going to enjoy it. So uh, working on getting some more people uh, that I think are really really cool to join my pod and uh, create good content, good conversation, so that uh, hopefully you feel inspired, you feel motivated, um, and you feel uh, you, you 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 feel better. You feel better, and you feel better about yourself and and. Uh, that's the whole thing. I just want to produce content that help people to get from point A to point B to point destiny. And so hopefully my friends and I you help, help can help you do that. So with that being said, greatness lives on the edge of death. I am not afraid to die. I will fight for my dreams. I will celebrate my dreams. And I will die for my dreams. Thoughts are things and everything starts off as a thought first and springs from a place of mindfulness and clarity. My name is Mar Fox Jr. Don't be afraid of... No. Work through your fear of starting the process. Done.